Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm sure glad that you joined us today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from the Veterinary School at Kansas State University, and today we have a special guest, Dr. Chris Reinhart from our colleagues over in Animal Science and Industry here at Kansas State. We're going to talk about managing mud and taking care of those cattle. Thanks for seeing us today, and we're going to talk to you here after the break. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey, folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Reinhardt. Chris is our state extension specialist for, for feed yard cattle around, around the state of Kansas, and it's always great to have you on the show, and, and thanks for taking your time to, to come be with us. I'll always make time for this, Doc. <laughs> well, Dr. Reinhardt and I were, you know, looking at topics and things that we need to discuss and, you know, some areas of the world wish they could talk about mud right now. Um, others are, are ready to get rid of it, but, but mud tends to be an issue. There's different geographical regions of the United States where it's more of an issue because of soil type and, and the amount of rain they get and snow. But uh, let's, let's just kick start and, and talk about some of the issues with mud and, and get to some of the numbers. Yeah, mud steals performance no matter, really within reason, unless you're raising cattle in the desert, you're going to have mud at some point, and it steals performance. Yep. So when, when we start to think about, you know, whether it's average daily gain, feed efficiency, increasing days on feed, all these things that can either have direct impact on increasing cost or indirect increase because of, you know, interest rates and, and amount of time that money's money's being loaned, you know, what are some of the, the impacts directly that, that mud has on cattle? When we think about mud, I like to sort of think of it in terms of layers and uh, we can go up to the, the cattle's pastern, up to their hock and up to their belly. And pastern deep mud for a brief period of time really isn't hurting us. But the deeper that mud gets and the longer the time the cattle have to fight that, that's when we're talking serious negative impacts on performance. Yeah, and I think that, that, you know, I think we all understand that that can't be a good thing or that cattle are, are bucking it, but, but I think people forget that cattle are kind of like people. If it's easy to do, we'll do it. If it's hard to do, we'll do it when we have to. And, and when you look at cattle in a feed yard or cattle in a dry lot situation and going to the bunk, the, they, they, they tend to go to that, well, it's hard to get there, so I'm going to do it when I, when I have to eat. And then as a nutritionist, we're always looking for nutritional issues, and if cattle go from eating 10 meals a day because it's easy to get to the bunk down to three or four and trying to eat the same amount in those three or four meals, we got acidosis. Right, and so, so we're having that binge uh, eating because they're, they're over, overly hungry, and, and that's causing us some some situations well we got about a minute here before we have to go to a break so what are some of the things as far as um, you know feed efficiency carcass that that you see when you're is it strictly just based off of that intake average daily gain and energy utilization or or do we see a direct impact on feed efficiency I think it's both doc number one they are going to eat less feed if they go to the bunk fewer times during the day uh, partly because we're causing that acidosis, but then 
the energy that they're expending to get to the bunk is going to, they're just using up a good chunk of that energy that they're supposed to be using for gain. So gain does go down, but because gain goes down, feed efficiency, uh, feed to gain, as it were, goes up dramatically during those periods that they're having to fight the mud. Cool. Folks, we're going to take a break. More from Doc Talk and Dr. Chris Reinhardt after the messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Jennifer Holly recently received an Amstut scholarship. She grew up on a family-owned dairy with registered Holsteins in northwestern Wisconsin. Her passion for the dairy business led her to the University of Wisconsin School of Veterinary Medicine, and her work there took her to Mexico, New Zealand, Turkey, Ecuador, and Indonesia to learn even more about international agriculture. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who is a nutritionist and production specialist here in the state of Kansas. He's our feedlot extension specialist um, from Animal Science and Industries, and we're always tickled to death to have him on the show. We're talking about mud. We've been, you know, let's let's just start to break it down. Start out, you know, the first thing I always battled was our receiving pins. And those calves, we had 150 $200,000 worth of cattle coming in on a truck and we're going to put them into a place before we process them and that's the receiving pen. Comfort is king when it comes to getting these calves in, uh, getting them some good quality feed, a nice drink of water and a comfortable place to lay down. Yeah, and I think we get caught in that, uh, at least the producers I work with and, and myself, I get caught in that if I can't clean the entire pen I'm not going to do anything. You know, it's it's an all or nothing situation, and and really, you know, just hooking a box blade on and making a lap or making a track around that that pin to give those animals even a track to lay down in can be huge for for money. What we like to say is cattle don't lie, and when they are laying down, that means they're more comfortable than standing up. And if we can give them any place that's better than standing, especially these cattle that are long hauled. We've got to give them some comfort and a place to rest. 
Yep, they say that cattle, it takes 15 hours on the truck before they start to lay down. And so some of these animals that are long haul cattle coming in, the first thing they want to do is rest. And man, when they're standing there shaking or shivering because they don't have a place to lay down, it's something that's maybe more important than the vaccine we give them. I think you're right. And, and uh, we got to pay attention to these things. Look at the cattle, see what they're needing. What are some other things we can do in these pens? Bedding is, is sometimes critical. And the thing I always say, and I learned it from you, Doc, is there's certain parts of the country, it's not if it's going to get muddy, but when. And it's about our plan. What's your plan for when the mud comes? And sometimes it might just come down to putting down some bedding and, and yeah, scraping out the mud or at least the top layer, but give those cattle a comfortable place to lay down. Yep, mounds? Mounds, absolutely huge. And the more moisture you have and the more chance you have for getting mud, the higher and the steeper the mounds and the more mound area you need. Okay, and we'll, we'll get to that. We're going to talk about in the last segment, we're going to talk about prevention and, and some of those things. But really, we want to um, kind of hone in on to kind of wrap up the, the receiving cap. You know, when you use bedding, you need to make sure you clean that stuff up. Exactly. It, that's a, a beautiful breeding ground for disease, and it serves its purpose for a very short amount of time. And after that, it's just filth, it's wet, it, it's as uncomfortable as the mud is. And if the calves start nibbling on it and we have a salmonella, you know, you can just have some issues. So if you use bedding, make sure you clean that bedding out. Anything else on the, the receiving calf end of things? I just, I had an epiphany the other day. I said, we need to name rest as our new nutrient. <laughs> well, I think rest, uh, oxygen, water, and feed are something that we need to do for, for cattle comfort and, and promoting health and, and getting those calves ready so the vaccines will work. We're going to take a break, folks. After the break, we're going to come back, talk with more with Dr. Chris Reinhardt about mud management and prevention in the feedlot. Calves require adequate, high-quality colostrum immediately following birth to receive the immune and nutritional support needed to fight diseases and thrive. Next Generation Colostrix Colostrum Replacer and Supplement are USDA licensed to aid in the treatment of failure of passive transfer and contain natural maternal bovine colostrum antibodies against E. coli K99. Ask your animal health supplier for Colostrix or visit agrilabs.com for details. Colostrix makes all systems go. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who is our feedlot. Uh, extension specialist for the state of Kansas and beyond. Uh, Chris is known nationally and internationally for the work that he's done in, in both nutrition and, and production and, and we've even incorporated him a little bit in production medicine. Um, 
which is always dangerous, but being a nutritionist and a veterinarian, um, I've learned to cope with my differences with myself. Uh, but uh, Chris, we're talking about mud management, and you know we got into some of the things up front, and, and we talked about the receiving period. But now, these cattle are in their feeding pen. What are some of the numbers? What are some of the t talk to me about some of the some of the the decreases we're going to see? If cattle are fighting mud on any given day, uh, that's as deep as their hawk, a foot deep, 16 inches, whatever have you. Uh, they're going to lose about 20% of their daily gain potential for that day. So if cattle are supposed to gain three, now they're gaining two, two and a half. Uh, wow. If, if they're fighting belly deep mud, you might as well scratch the gain off for that day. Uh, every day they're fight, f as you mentioned previously, every day they're fighting belly deep mud, they're not gaining hardly anything at all. They're going sideways, and any feed that they eat is going up in smoke. And I think that when we start to think about that, you know, everybody... We, we tend to focus on the confined animal, but if that's a cow, instead of losing average daily gain, that's body condition score. We've been, in the wintertime, body condition score is king, and if that, that cow is having to use all of the good nutrients you're providing for her just to fight off mud, we're going backwards. Yeah, and, and I think that we forget about also the, the how cold it is, you know that when we have these free th freeze-thaw cycles, and but depending on where you're living, you know, y you don't see them, but, but that stuff gets caked on the hide, um, and then they lay down, they can freeze to the ground. I I've seen it where they actually stand up and, and the, hair, the hair coat for the winter is actually pulled off because we, we have this wet, dry, wet, dry, freeze to the ground type thing, and then we're actually losing that hair coat. It's something that I think, Doc, is so easy for us to overlook as, as producers, and yet I think it's stealing silently from us every day, especially us in the northern climates. Sure. And so, so when we start to think about prevention, what are some of the things that, that we're looking at in, in the feeding pens as far as preventing, um, and we'll get this started and then we'll wrap it up in the next segment, but what are some of your, your big bullet points as far as preventing mud and, and, and preventing losses from mud. Because we're not going to prevent rainfall. We're not going to prevent mud from happening, but there are things we can do strategically. That's exactly right. Mud is going to happen, again, unless you're living in a desert. Mud is going to happen at some point. It's up to us to prepare the pens and have a plan to deal with the mud. The first is mounds. Mound size and mound shape is going to be relative to how much mud we're planning on. Uh, if you're in some of the northern and eastern areas, we need bigger mounds, more space. We talked about comfort for the receiving calves, but for performance and production, cattle that are growing and finishing need extra uh, comfortable place to lay down and, uh, and an easy access to the bunk. Yep, and so uh, mound design and, and pen cleaning and, and some of those will come back after the break. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll see you here after this message. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Howdy, this is Kurt Pate with your Beef Quality Assurance Tip for the Day. When I look at a load of cattle, when cattle are being loaded to go to the harvest facility, that to me is the time when all of our beef quality assurance practices come together. That is the beef industry right there. So to me, all the things that we put together, we need to piece them out, to figure out what is the best practices that we can do. Cattle handling is always a big component in beef quality assurance, if you ask me. If we can get the cattle in a chute, on a truck, on a trailer, without yelling, without prodding, without any of those things that stir animals up and get them excited, we're on our way to taking that animal to a place to get them to accept what we want them to have happen to them in a way that their body is ready to accept it, they are mentally right, everything is right for the animal. And that to me is good stockmanship and beef quality assurance. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. 
And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, and the reason we do it has been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. My pleasure to be here with you. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Reinhart from Animal Science. He is our state feedlot extension specialist and we're talking about mud. And Chris, we, are, we, we discussed building these mounds and, and giving those cattle a dry place to lay down. And, and the concept of a mound, folks, is the water will run off the mound and, and settle in the lower areas of the pen. So we build these mounds. But there are other things that we have to consider as we get into wetter, more, more wintry climates. Uh, let's talk about pen space and pen slope. Pen space, I've been fascinated by this for years. As you get down into the, the drier, more southern climates, 100 square feet per animal is more than adequate when we don't really have to deal with a lot of moisture. As we move north and east, there are times of the year 500 square feet is not enough. And it's simply because cattle need a place to move, a place to move, uh, to lay down, et cetera. And the mud just simply uh, steals comfort in a number of different ways. And I think that a lot of people look at the size of the feeding pen based on these cattle need so much area to, for natural you know, behavior, but really it's mud. What about pen slope? Pen slope is one of those things, a little is good, a lot can be too much, uh, and, and more slope is always good for drainage, but if we're making the pens slope so much that the cattle have to work that much harder to get back to the bunk, uh, again, the bunk should be the highest place in the pen so that it's the driest and most comfortable, but if we put too much slope in a pen, cattle won't use that entire three, four, five hundred square feet, and it becomes irrelevant. Right, they're not billy goats. So, so as we increase in moisture, we increase the pen size, the, the amount of square foot per animal, and we need increased more slope in the pen. Now let's move to, to concrete, because when you were talking about when you get to the place where it has to be so steep or so much space, it might be cheaper for us just to, to put in an alternative source of, of footing, and that's the concrete. As we look at feed yard design over the past roughly 30 years, we've seen the, the depth of the bunk pad, that concrete part right behind the bunk, just keeps growing and growing and growing. And that's because comfortable cattle eat more feed and cattle that eat more perform better. And so we've just watched these pads grow, but eventually it comes to the question of how deep should the pad be? Should we even be on mud at all if we're in some of these really wet climates? Sure. So I think that taking it into consideration, you know, there's emergency cleaning with box blades to provide immediate relief. There's long-term planning this summer. You should, it's too late for this winter, but we can build mounds this summer. Um, work with your extension specialist to get that done. Yeah, prevention is way more valuable than trying to catch up after the fact. 
Thanks for being here today. It's awesome. Thank you. And thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to know more about what Chris and I do here at K-State, you can find us on the web at www.bet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian and on some of these situations with mounds, pin design, and, and break even on whether or not you want to put concrete in, get a hold of somebody like Chris that's a feedlot extension specialist and work through the numbers, do what's best for the cattle, do what's best for your profitability or, and sustainability of your operation. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.